different. I grew up in Australia. Um, I always had a passion, I guess, for developing countries, emerging markets. I, I could never quite understand why I, growing up, I mean, we weren't by any means wealthy in Australia, but I had access, as in my family had very little money, but I had access to anything I needed, education, resources, healthcare, security, great quality of life. And I could never quite understand how people born in other countries could have it so differently, could end up in poverty and violence and in conflict. And um, so that just always stuck in my mind. And I was very passionate about how, how you can solve that. But it became very clear that as I was learning and studying through university and high school, like the system is broken. And I ended up um, working for Goldman Sachs in Australia. So I studied, I was very good at math. So I got funneled through into maths and finance and then ended up with Goldman it was a great place where I could make a bit of money, get my resume, have that kind of solid foundation for myself going into life. Um, I left, uh, at the end of the day, we were kind of shuffling money around for large corporations and I wanted to do something that was more meaningful for the world. Uh, I took time out and I actually ended up learning to code and creating an app for communities. Um, that was something I'd always wanted to do. And um, so I kind of, yeah, I, well, I also took time out and traveled. So in Australia, it's very common to take a year or two and just to travel. So I actually took a year or two and just traveled, um, went on a kind of a spiritual journey, I guess you could say in India and lots of different places around the world. Um, worked on and off on creating this app and then ended up kind of talking to Nico. Nico was a, and I met and, and over the last kind of year or two, we've been talking a lot about emerging markets and financing and, and we both share this passion for emerging markets and inclusion and financial inclusion and, and changing the system and recognizing that a lot of the problems in our world come from a broken system. Um, and so long story short, that's kind of how we ended up. Well, he's friends with Jeff. And then we started talking about Bitcoin and realizing it's this amazing kind of underlying technology that can solve so many things. And anyway, I'll let, I'll let Nico share the rest. I started my career off in private equity, predominantly looking at projects in frontier and emerging markets. And that was really like a very shared passion for Andy and I. What was always so interesting about it, and this goes back to your, your remittance payment piece, um, is those transactions being done at scale still had this currency component that I always felt was like so inefficient of translating like a US dollar to a Ghanaian CD. Um, this peg or hedge that had to be in place for the transaction and um, just was like a few percentage points that when you're looking at it this way, like we might not think about um, the cost of a credit card transaction in a Western space, but when you're looking at some of these like financing deals, like that's, that's a significant amount of money. And it always felt like so inefficient. It's so interesting now to like jump ahead and see like certain solutions that are being built or proposed on top of Bitcoin that solve that. Um, and it's fascinating. But after, so during PE, I had this passion project still have a passion project in a consumer packaged goods space. It's actually like a uh, started as a hot sauce company and then a spicy products company. And that company ended up kind of like taking off and allowed me to like wear the entrepreneur hat, but coming with this background of like wanting a very um, healthy balance sheet, wanting to have a cash flow positive business, we we're profitable within four months and then watching like scaling that. So how do we scale a product? um marketing it and it gave me like a great idea as to wear that wearing that entrepreneur hat and running a very very healthy business jeff and i met like about halfway through that with jeff andy and i are all part of this group summit series which is predominantly in the u.s but really a worldwide um group they run events um where they bring entrepreneurs together and you can network hear talks uh jeff and i went to the wrong dinner one of the nights at an event in l.a and didn't meet one another until the end of the dinner a number of years ago. And he starts telling me all about this book that he's going to be writing for his kids and this legacy that he wants to, to basically impart to them as to how he thinks the world should be. And I like for the next two and a half days, we just spent a lot of time together. And then at every other significant moment, I felt like through life and the business journey, I would reach out to Jeff as like, wanting to hear his feedback. It's the same way that you, I think he, he touches people in this way that you're like, this is, this is a special person. He has a unique point of view and can synthesize seemingly complex information into a really digestible uh, bits of information. So we stayed in touch. We talked a lot. And I think uh, over the past number of years, so 2020 on, we're looking at like the macro view of the world. Um, 
he's talking about Bitcoin as a store of value. And Andy and I are, are diving into what's happening in emerging markets during this very tumultuous time period. And we're looking at what's happening on Bitcoin and this shift from um, a store of value to this information network and what can potentially happen and be built on top of that. And so I kind of put Jeff and Andy and myself together and we're like, you guys are great people. Like, let's see if this, this works out with different skill sets that solve um, things that each one of us don't, don't have. And I feel like there's a real opportunity for something here. And they, I mean, everybody was kind of in the same frame of mind. And that was the beginning of us starting Ego Death Capital.